Hi, in this video I want to talk about creative confidence. Basically how you become more confident in terms of creativity in science. I think this is a very important topic because I think we all agree that creativity is very important in science development of new ideas and making progress. So during a recent lab meeting we were talking about why not more people in the lab take the opportunity to share the ideas that they've had, for example in the context of a viewpoint paper or review paper. And the discussion quickly moved to maybe people do have ideas but there are certain roadblocks to developing these ideas or to thinking the ideas are good. And I think this is actually very common. And so in this video I want to address some of the questions that come up in your mind <laughs> and how you can overcome these hurdles. So here are some of the things that may be popping up in your mind and they may prevent you from creating a viewpoint paper or developing your idea further. The first one is I don't really want to put myself out there. I'm afraid I will embarrass myself. So basically this is the fear of embarrassment and it is a real one. This is a very important point and we have to take this seriously. But you should understand that you're not going this alone. I mean when you develop this idea you will discuss this first in a more protected environment like your lab group for example. You don't immediately go out there and share it with the world. I mean you could but most people don't do that. So you first share it in your protected circle and in particular you will share it with your advisor or with your committee members and you get some feedback from them. So it's not like they would let you sort of um, go out there and, and share a half-baked idea with the world that you later on would be embarrassed about. No, I mean this is why you have an advisor and why you have colleagues and peers. So basically to address this point you're not doing this alone. There are people to help you and support you. The second point is which I hear very often is I don't have any good ideas but you do. I think it is virtually inevitable that if you work on a certain topic for a number of years like in a part of a PhD or as part of a postdoc and not have some ideas about what you read. The point is you're probably not writing them down and you're probably censoring yourself and you are not making the conscious choice to develop ideas. But you can do all that. You can write down ideas that you have before you forget them because <laughs> those ideas are gone very quickly if you don't capture them in writing in a notebook or in an online document. So write them down and you have to also just accept that you will have ideas. So you have to be open to having ideas and you have to take your ideas seriously. This takes practice and you have to establish this as a routine. So get into the routine of whenever you have a thought about the topic you're currently working on, writing it down in an online note. And having this document open, I, I do that myself, it, it reminds you that it's okay to have ideas and to write them down. Later on you can, you can always decide it wasn't a good idea or you don't want to pursue it but the important thing is to capture the idea and to write it down. And one way to have good ideas is to just have many ideas. And you are not alone in having to judge if an idea is good. You can share it. You can share it with your peers, with your colleagues and with your advisor. And they can help you decide which of these ideas are actually good. The next point is I can't judge if an idea is good. Maybe I have ideas but maybe I also write them down but I simply can't decide which ones are good ideas. I lack the experience. Now this may be true. The most important thing though is that you have ideas in the first place and you capture them, what we just talked about. And then remember you are not alone. You don't have to make that call yourself. You don't have to censor yourself either. You can capture these ideas and then you can talk with your peers or with your advisor, your committee members or other people in a protected environment basically about these ideas and they can help you judge with their experience which is greater than yours which ideas may actually be worth pursuing. So next time you have an idea just share it with your advisor 
and see what they think about it. And you might be surprised. The next one is, I'm not experienced enough to write such papers like viewpoint papers and review papers. Nobody cares what I think. Now, this is partly true. <laughs> I mean, the editors of some of the journals, maybe they will be much more interested in reading um, what a more experienced and established researcher thinks about a certain question in a certain field. And of course, it is a much easier to come up with a lot of ideas if you've worked in a certain field for a decade or several decades. But don't forget that good ideas sometimes come from people that are not already burdened with certain knowledge in the field and therefore are not limited by that knowledge. This is also an important mode to have ideas, not just deep knowledge, but also a kind of a naive attitude, a playful attitude towards a field that can really bring completely fresh new ideas to a field. So you could have these ideas and this can really be an advantage. So don't sell yourself short. So yes, journals will generally tend to be biased towards publishing and accepting and being interested in the first place in articles from more experienced researchers that have already made a name for themselves in a certain field. But it is also possible to include some of these people or maybe your advisor or some other collaborators to basically get that bonus yourself by collaborating with more experienced people. And the last one, this will be a distraction from my real work, which is lab work. Now, this will very much depend on your lab and the culture in your field. In my lab, I make it clear from the very beginning that I value a viewpoint perspective opinion paper just as much as I value a paper based on empirical work in the lab. As such, such pieces of work are becoming part of your PhD thesis or as part of your postdoc output. And as such, this kind of work does contribute to your productivity. It's not like it prevents you from it. And I always think that these kinds of thinking exercises make you think more broadly about your topic. And that can only be very helpful to you in all kinds of ways, least of which writing your introduction and discussion section for your empirical papers. In addition, a lot of these papers can be relatively short. They can be maybe just two, three printed pages in a journal. So it's not like they're always an epic amount of effort. A review paper would maybe like this, um, would be a lot of effort, would take a lot of time, depending on the review paper. But a shorter piece like an opinion paper, a viewpoint paper, a perspective paper, they can be much shorter and therefore they also don't take that much time if you have the idea already ready. And don't forget that in a more practical sense, you can always work on these opinion viewpoint perspective papers while you are also doing lab work because there will not always be something to do. Sometimes plants just grow in a greenhouse and during this time you can work on such papers just on the side to see if, how they develop basically. So they're definitely not a distraction from your work. In fact, they will help your work. Yeah, and so those are some of the most common questions that we got. And maybe you have others. If so, please let me know in the comments. But I think if you go through this list, you will see that you can contribute ideas. You can write them down. You can generate the creative confidence to produce such products. And so I hope you do. And with that, thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.